And the answer is, well, it happened in the developing fetus. It sort of hung in there, and then it started actively happening again during puberty, one cell at a time. If you're premenopausal, if you're in your fertile years, then you would choose, oh my god, it's happening right now. If you're postmenopausal, then you would say, ah, I'm too old for that now. So we've considered the differences in meiosis in males and in females, and there's differences of several kinds. One is what happens to the four cells that meiosis normally produces. In males, all four of those cells become sperm. In females, only one of those cells is really a cell. The others are two small sort of membrane-enclosed blebs called polar bodies, which contain the unwanted chromosomes from the division. The timing is also very different. In males, meiosis begins in puberty and continues for the lifespan, essentially, whereas in females, it begins much earlier in the fetus, but then it arrests and doesn't begin again until puberty. In males, there are millions of meioses, maybe 50 million every day, depending on your age. In females, there's only about one meiosis completed every month in each menstrual cycle, and the menstrual cycles eventually cease at menopause. Coming up next, Lecture 7F, we're going to talk about how meiosis solves problem two, randomizing the combinations of chromosomes that get put into the daughter cells. I hope to see you there.